Hey Math 43, I always get the question coming out of the chapter 560 dev, how do you do number six? And there's, I, I would argue there's three ways that you could do number six. So let me talk about this. The three ways I think of are, I could use the empirical rule, and I'll show you that one. Um, I could go ahead and I could use inverse norm on z-scores, and I'll show you that one. And then the third way is just a technique with any multiple choice, or not any multiple choice, but a lot of them. I can plug in the answers and then see which one works, right? And then check for correct answer. So let me go through each of these and show you the ways to do this. So when I say the empirical rule, right, I've got this, this variable, it's normally distributed, all right, and I know the mean is 400, but I don't know the standard deviation. Okay, so let's do, we'll call this method one, two, and three. So let's do method one, the empirical rule. If I draw a graph, or I try and sketch this graph, right, and then we've got these, these test scores, whatever that is. So I've got test scores down here on the x-axis, the mean 400's under the peak, so I've got test scores. Right, and what I know here is that 15% of all scores exceed five, whoops, excuse me, exceed 581. So if I'm at 581 here, right, and I think about the area to the right of that, I know that this area here is 15%. All right, so basically this right here is the 85th percentile. And if we think about the distance down the x-axis, actually let me use a slightly better color, here we go. If I think about that change right there, right, so that, that, that range from 581 to 400, that difference is 181 units. And where I'm going with this is if this was something we were considering with the empirical rule, we know that when we get to the 84th percentile, according to the empirical rule, 84th percentile, right, because if we remember that the mean is always the 50th percentile, right, and then we add 34 more percent, we know that that occurs one standard deviation above the mean, right? So now I'm only going from the 84th to the 85th. So this gap here between 400 and 581, it's pretty close to one standard deviation. So that means the standard deviation has got to be close to 181, but slightly less than it. And that gets me to answer C. So if I use the empirical rule, I can get to answer C that way. Now, if I don't want to use the empirical rule, I can go ahead and I can use inverse norm, right? And you might be saying, well, Miss A, when you use inverse norm, you need to have, you need the percentile, oops, let me write 85, and you need the mean, right, which we have, and the standard deviation, which we don't have. And I'm with you there, but you can always find the percentile for um, z-scores. So I could do the same thing here. I can say, let's go inverse norm, and I can do 0 0.8501, and let me go over to my calculator for a moment and crunch that number. So when I do that, I get 1.036. So I know that the z-score has to be 1.036, and we know that, ooh, what was that? We know that the z-score formula is always value minus mean over standard deviation. So what I have here is that 1.036, excuse me, 1.036 is going to equal this value of 581 minus the mean of 400 over this standard deviation that I'm looking for. And when I crunch this algebraically, and I'm going to scooch this up for just a bit, I get 1.036. That's going to equal 181 over sigma. I'm going to multiply both sides by sigma, but divide by 1.036. So when I do 181 divided by 1.036, I get that sigma is 174, oops, excuse me, 174.6, and that's pretty close to 175. All right, so that's a third way to do this, a third way, excuse me, second way. Now let's take a look at the third way, and this is just a multiple choice technique, right? So I'm going to go back and I'm going to use this formula here, but I'm just going to plug in my possible answers. So I'm going to see what happens if I do inverse norm of 85% we go 400 and then we try 125. So let me go plug that into my calculator. All right, so we got inverse norm, what did I just say? 0.85, 400, and then 125. And we find out that that number is 529.6 basically. But ultimately it's not 581, right? It's not matching that number that I was given. So that means I can rule out A, that is not the answer. So I can repeat this 
right? And I can try plugging in. I'll, instead of 125, I'll try 150. And I'm going to tell you that's not going to work either. So then eventually you get to trying 175. And when I run that, and give me a moment, I'll crunch it exactly so we all have the same numbers, I'm going to get 581.4. And that one is close enough to 581. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.